How is powdered milk made? The process of producing powdered milk is an intricate and fascinating operation that begins at dairy farms scattered across the countryside and ends with a product that has an incredibly long shelf life and a wide range of applications. Powdered milk production has become an essential process not just for households, but also for large-scale industries and developing countries that require a stable, long-lasting dairy product. To truly appreciate the complexity of making powdered milk, let's break down each step of the journey, from the farm to the final product. The process begins at dairy farms where milk is produced fresh every day by cows. These dairy farms are typically located in rural areas where the cows can graze and be tended to by farmers. Large tank trucks collect fresh milk each morning from various dairy farms, visiting each one and gathering the milk that has accumulated over the past 24 hours. These tank trucks are equipped with refrigeration systems that keep the milk cool during transport to prevent spoilage. The milk is then transported from the farms to a central processing facility known as the creamery. Once the milk arrives at the creamery, it goes through its first stage of processing. The milk is filtered to remove any debris or impurities that may have been picked up during collection and transportation. After filtration, it's placed in large holding tanks, where it waits its turn to move to the next stage of the process. While in these holding tanks, the milk undergoes rigorous testing. A battery of tests is conducted to ensure that the milk meets strict quality standards for factors such as purity, fat content, and bacterial count. If the milk doesn't meet these standards, it will not proceed further into production. The next major step in the production of powdered milk is the evaporation process, where much of the water content is removed from the milk. This is a critical phase because raw milk contains about 87% water and only about 12% solids, including butterfat, proteins, and lactose. To make powdered milk, it's necessary to remove most of the water, leaving behind only the solids. The milk first passes through a large evaporator, a complex piece of machinery that removes about one-third of the water content from the milk. This evaporator is a massive structure, consisting of three cylindrical chambers, each about four feet in diameter and extending up to six stories in height. Inside the evaporator, a partial vacuum is applied, which lowers the boiling point of the milk to around 135 degrees Fahrenheit. This reduced boiling point is important for two reasons. First, it allows the water in the milk to evaporate at a lower temperature, which prevents the milk from becoming damaged by excessive heat. Second, it significantly reduces the energy cost of evaporation, making the process more economical. By the time the milk exits the evaporator, the water content has been reduced to about 50%, and the solids have increased in concentration. At this stage, the milk has taken on a thicker, more condensed consistency, making it ideal for further processing. During the evaporation process, the milk also undergoes pasteurization, a crucial step in ensuring the milk is safe for consumption. Pasteurization involves heating the milk to a specific temperature for a short period of time to kill harmful bacteria and pathogens. In this case, the milk is heated to around 175 degrees Fahrenheit for just 20 seconds before it is quickly cooled again. This process reduces the bacterial content without compromising the quality of the milk. If milk were to be heated for too long or at too high a temperature, it would scorch and lose many of its desirable properties. In a controlled creamery environment, however, the milk is passed through small tubes where it is heated quickly and efficiently. After pasteurization, the next step is separating the milk into its component parts, skim milk and cream. This is done in a machine called a separator, which spins the milk at high speeds. The centrifugal force created by the spinning motion causes the heavier cream or butter fat to separate from the lighter skim milk. The cream is then collected in a separate storage tank, where it will be used for other dairy products, such as butter or heavy cream. Meanwhile, the skim milk moves on to the next phase of production. 
One of the hallmarks of industrial milk production is consistency, and that's where the standardization process comes in. Standardizing milk means adjusting its composition to ensure that each batch has the exact same ratio of solids and fats. This is particularly important because the fat and solid content of milk can vary depending on a number of factors, including the season of the year and the diet of the cows. For example, whole milk must contain around 12.2% total solids, which includes 8.8% milk solids and 3.4% butterfat. If the raw milk from the dairy farms doesn't meet these exact standards, it is adjusted during the standardization process. This might involve condensing the milk further or adding back some of the cream that was removed earlier in the process. During this phase, even the vitamin content of the milk is checked to ensure it meets the required nutritional standards. By the time the milk is standardized, it is ready for the final stage of production. The next step is to turn the condensed milk into powdered milk. This is done using one of two main drying methods, spray drying or atomization. In the traditional spray drying method, the condensed milk is sprayed into a large tower filled with hot, swirling air. These towers, also known as spray dryers, are typically around 22 feet in diameter and can be as tall as 12 stories. The hot air, which is heated to around 400 degrees Fahrenheit, quickly evaporates the remaining water from the milk as the droplets fall, leaving behind tiny particles of powdered milk. Instead of spraying the milk through nozzles, the atomization system uses a high-speed wheel that spins the milk into even finer droplets. This method is more efficient and produces a finer powder. The drying towers used in this system are more compact than traditional spray dryers. The milk powder falls into a funnel-shaped hopper at the base of the tower, where it is collected and further processed. Once the milk powder has been collected, it moves to a stage called the fluidizing bed. This is where the powder is constantly shaken and stirred to ensure that it remains in a fluid-like state. It's at this point that any additives, such as vitamins, minerals, or lecithin, are mixed into the powder. The fluidizing bed ensures that these additives are evenly distributed throughout the milk powder. By the end of this process, regular powdered milk is produced and ready for packaging. Once the powdered milk is complete, it is packaged and prepared for shipping. Of the 30 million pounds of powdered milk produced annually at Humboldt, between half and two-thirds are sold overseas. Powdered milk is an essential product in many developing countries where fresh milk may not be readily available due to limited dairy production or a lack of refrigeration. Non-fat powdered milk, in particular, has a long shelf life and can be stored for up to two years under the right conditions. Whole milk powder, which contains added butter fat, has a shorter shelf life of six to nine months due to the fat content. However, by storing non-fat dry milk in an airtight container with an oxygen absorber, the shelf life can be extended even further. Powdered milk has become a vital resource for both industrial and household use, offering a nutritious, long-lasting alternative to fresh milk.